did Harry and, and would he would he cross that moral line? Would he magnetize his moral compass in the service of of uh, of revenge? Man, what a season! That was a great season of Bosch Legacy. Thank oh, you. thank you. Now, right off the bat, Titus, we've got to talk about Bosch's relationship with Maddie because it's such an interesting arc throughout from her kidnapping to the Ellis shooting. Tell me a little bit about how you saw that father-daughter relationship evolve and change throughout. Well, you, know, you have to realize that Madison's been on the show since she was about 12 or 13. So she, she, I've literally watched her grow from a child into a young woman in real time. Mm-hmm. And with that comes, you know... Um, you know, maturity and, and, you know, a deeper grasp of, of, of craft and artistry and all that stuff. And I've always been extremely protective of that relationship in how we execute it when we're on the set and how we do it. And um, it's evolved to such an interesting place now. Um, and particularly in this season, and she feels like she's, that there's a, some sense of a, uh, of the darkness kind of penetrating her in a way. And then Harry's trying to dissuade her from that, you know, and he's the kind of prime example of, you know, you don't, don't let that inform how you operate. And at the same time, he's also trying to protect his child in, in, in the, in the sense of, are you ready? Can you, can you handle this? Do you, don't you need to take time? And obviously the emotional components that exist there um, were allowed to finally kind of, uh, I don't want to say breathe, but almost be demonstrated because, you know, Bosch is a very inverted guy emotionally, not emotionally demonstrative at all, except with his child. But even then there's a, it's kind of a built in thing for him to not, be emotionally demonstrative, that vulnerability makes him uncomfortable, but uh, that the arc with, with Maddie being abducted and and taken is um, you can't have higher stakes than that. And so it it was, uh, it it left a lot of great stuff for us to play in, in those moments. And then in the aftermath of that, how she's navigating that and how he's navigating that, um, it, it it gave us um, just you know a lot of very very powerful stuff to play even in the moments of that. I think the silences in the aftermath of the kidnapping are as powerful as the uh, you know as the height of uh, the emotions. They can't go any higher than they do in those first two episodes. Right, and it leads us to this wild cliffhanger that everyone's been talking about with the prison phone call. Tell me a little bit about how that's going to affect the father daughter relationship moving forward. Do you think? Well, I think you see it there on screen because, you know, anyone who's, who's watched the show consistently over the years knows exactly who Preston orders is. And we had that whole season and that was really the, the, the Irving Bosch thing. Um, And here's a guy who, you know, I, I say, you know, if Bosch is Batman, you know, borders is like the Joker. Um, you know, this is the second time he's trying to manipulate something and, and, you know, purposely we left it off. So there wasn't time for there to be a reaction or a giveaway in any, in any direction. Mm-hmm. Um, it's his lack of response is, is, is deafening. Um, so, you know, obviously, um, you know, borders is up to something. The question is, did Harry and, and would he would he cross that moral line? Would he magnetize his moral compass in the service of of uh, of revenge? And and that that will will be seen. But obviously, that's that's uh, those stakes are very very high, and that will definitely impact their relationship. Either way, you know, if you're if, if he's being falsely accused of doing something he hasn't done, it's being manipulated by a sociopathic psychopath, which is what Borders is, versus if he has crossed that line, there's two very uh, interesting dynamics. And I think that's going to and, and, and it will also it, it will 
you know, Chandler's going to be affected by that as well because of the, the, the nature of their relationship and how close that they have become. I think Chandler above anyone else probably knows Harry the best. And she knows that he has a, a really strong moral compass, but you know, somebody messes with your family, who knows? So it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, there's a lot of juggling going on and I'm excited to, to get to the bottom of that um, in our next season. I'm excited too. And speaking of Chandler, Mimi, we've seen Chandler go on quite the journey where she's now announcing that she's running for DA. Tell me about that evolution because it's been quite the, quite the 180, but also quite the, the logical progression for her. Yeah, it is. And uh, I think, I think it's something that the audience can relate to because particularly in the case that we deal with in season two, where I have this client and the client is innocent and the, the degree to which politics interferes with that and puts the current DA in a position of, of being really disconnected and really heartless and also not about justice. And I think that's one thing that, that Bosch and Chan have always had in common is um, this sense of justice and sort of a bulldog element of they're not ever going to let go until they achieve the final result, achieve, you know, the justice in whichever form it should be coming. So I think there's a huge level of frustration and disgust. And I think for Chandler, she's been doing this such a long time she's got plenty of money and it's like hell no like this is not okay and to heck with it i'll do it myself i'll show you how it's done and to that extent you know it makes sense for her and it's something that you know i find really exciting yeah we're gonna get to see her dive into the world of politics do you think she's in for a rude awakening or is this kind of a perfect fit do you think well it'll be interesting to see we don't really know titus and i uh what's going to happen in yeah. season. Yeah. so right. but if i am running for da um look she's been around for a long time she's you know supported various political candidates i don't think any of it would necessarily come as a surprise to her. Um, but for anybody who enters the political arena, as you know, they're, they're going to try to dig up and the opposition will use anything they can. So I'm sure if she does end up running, that things will come up or things will happen. You know, that will kind of rock her on her heels a bit. But um, that that's all fascinating and something that would be so so much fun to explore yeah absolutely i i wouldn't want to root against her so <laughs> <laughs> now going into uh season three i know you, you probably don't know much or can't say much but is there anything that either of you would like to pass on to fans ahead of season three because i know everyone's very excited I mean, we're shooting season three. We're going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 really the extent of it now, for obvious reasons. With the right. the very long strike, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of catch up to do. I mean, certainly there's there's a structure and and everything to what's coming, but we really we we don't know. Nothing's nothing's been published, and but we just know, as Mimi said, season three will be coming. We can't wait to get back to it. Yeah, absolutely. I know the fans can't wait either. So thank you so much for talking with me today. And uh, I really appreciate your time. 